Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here today to talk about why we got into preparedness in the first place. And I've mentioned this here and there, but I've never done a specific video on this. And I thought of something that happened along the way that I never, I always forget about. So I don't know that I've ever mentioned it. So really this goes way back to in the 90s at some point when I just started buying more things in bulk simply for the sake of the convenience of having these things on hand, such as flour and anything else that I used a lot of because I was making a lot of bread. I go through a lot of canned tomatoes. This was back before we got serious about growing a lot of our own vegetables and our own tomatoes. And so I would stock up on canned tomatoes because I, the crushed kind, because I use those to make sauce all the time. Barbecue sauce, spaghetti sauce, lasagna sauce, any kind of sauce that's going to be tomato based and also in making chili, enchiladas and more and salsa. Let's not forget salsa. And so when the, I would get, find these things on sale, I would stock up on them. And then we had a local co-op that would buy glory bee products that you could buy in 25 and 50 pound bags much like azure standard in fact also located in oregon and at least with glory bee they actually had a drop point here which was nice and when i learned about that through our homeschooling group i was buying those kind of things you know sugar salt flour spices and more because it was a much better deal and it was nice having these things on hand that i wouldn't have to run to the store all the time especially when your kids are young i really wasn't one that liked to have to pack everything up just to go get a few things at the store i liked having what i needed then came Y2K. This is the one thing I always forget about. And I was a little surprised at the time because I didn't know that then, because we just didn't talk about it much, that Patrick would ever even consider kind of doing something like that, you know, putting up things specifically for some event that may happen. And it was kind of a bit of a catalyst to get us there. Now, we weren't those kind of people that were like, oh, we're going to go buy a whole bunch of rice and beans and then nothing happens, turn around and sell them. No. I mean, we already had a pretty good, you know, some food storage on hand. We were already doing pretty good with that. So it was more focusing on other things that we may not have considered about. We also always had lanterns and things like that because power outages were just the norm around here but we started looking at getting more things to help us just in case something really did happen even though we didn't really think it would it was like hey why not and i was actually really excited when patrick was the one that took the reins on that and started doing that. I'm like, this is very cool because it's something that had always been in the back of my mind because I would, in the 90s, I was big into reading a lot of Dean Koontz books. And there's been a few of his stories through the years where he's had some character in the story that was very much preparedness minded. I think there was a couple different ones that actually had bunkers and just things like that. And I'm like, man, that is really cool. I'd love to be in that kind of position so that no matter what happens, you're, you're kind of set, you know, whether it be just a, the standard power outage that happens all the time around here or something a little bit bigger. And then came 2010, when I finally decided it was time for me to start learning about what's really happening out in the world, because I never paid any attention to that. I just voted for the party that had the most similar values to me and just like, okay, whatever. But I always felt guilty about that. I always felt guilty just voting for that person when I really didn't know anything about them. And so 2010, I'm like, you know what? You know, we're getting ready for another voting cycle here in 2012. I think it's time I really start learning. I, I need to find out who these people are. What is the Republican Party better? Is the Democrat Party better? Are they all the same? What's going on here? Is there something better? And I tell you what, my eyes opened up to a whole bunch of things. That was when I really learned that there was, when it comes to, R&D, there's really no difference. It's just the Bloods and the Crips, and they just wear different colors, and that's about it. So then that then led to a few other things, like learning about 
more about events that happen throughout history and realizing that, wow, we've been lied to on so many fronts. And that led to another thing and another thing and another thing and learning about our economy and our dollar. And oh my goodness. I mean, my brain was about ready to explode with all the things I was learning. And then I, I started talking to Patrick saying, I think maybe, you know, it's time to get even more serious about what we've already kind of started here. And he was totally on board with it. By this point, we'd already been growing our own tomatoes. We decided to expand our garden to start putting in more things. We got rid of the above ground swimming pool to make more room in our, our little backyard uh, here. It, we're still in the same place and this one shy one third acre lot in a neighborhood, even though we have acquired two more pieces of property since. Um, we still do most of that right here. And then eventually we added our chickens, which was something that, you know, we took us a few years to get there. We knew we were going to do chickens. We just needed time to really figure out, okay, what kind of coop were we going to put in? Where are we going to put it? And then Patrick was going to build it himself, which he did do in starting in 2016 to 2017. And so in 2017, we got our first chickens. And then we just really started building on that. And through all those that, that time from at least from around 2010 and clear until now, we just keep building on what we have. And I have to say, it's been a real blessing having this type of preparedness. You know, we, I have so many videos on, on different types of cook sources. Like you can't see it, but over here, I have a, a gas oven that is just for a backup. We have solar power now. It's something we built on slowly. We have a rainwater catchment. We have all kinds of different things. And you can find all kinds of videos on this in, if you just do a search on my channel on all the many different things that we've done. I've done, we've done videos on how to get started in preparedness, how to buy in bulk, how to get started in that, because when you have very little funds, it's hard to know how to get started, but it's just a matter of building a little bit at a time and not feeling you got to run out and spend thousands and thousands of dollars for, you know, two, three, four, five years worth of freeze dried food. Nope. You don't have to do that. In fact, buying freeze dried food was one of the very last things we did. And that was more so I could try it out, see if that was something I was even going to like. And I'm glad I tried a lot of it out before investing in a ton of it because there's not much freeze-dried food I really like. You know, it is nice having these different things in storage and then, you know, canning more, dehydrating more, and just all the many things that we do. All kinds of different life sources. We've got our wood stove. We have many different ways to cook items. And I have a video just on that. All your different cook source options that you can consider from the cheapest to the most expensive. Like I always say, if you can get a wood stove, that's going to be one of your best investments because you can use it to cook with, even if it's just a standard wood stove. Not doesn't even have to be a cook stove. We don't have a place here for a an actual cook stove, so we just have a standard wood stove in the living room and I do a lot of cooking on it. I do some baking on it, like roasts and more. And then I have ways I can bake bread and pies on top of that wood stove with a little uh, separate oven that I can set on top. Heat the house, dry the clothes. I heat water to wash dishes or even bathe with if we need to. I dehydrate with it. I do a lot of things with it. And that's why even though it's probably it's going to be one of your bigger expenses, it is worth it if you have the space and you're able to do it just because of all the many other things it's good for. So like a dehydrator, you know, like I got two electric dehydrators here, you know, they might just be good for dehydrating. And if you get one that's a cabinet style where you take the racks out, you can also use it for yogurt making, anything where you just need to keep something warm. But it doesn't have as many uses as a wood stove where I can, I can't use this to dry my laundry. Well, I could, but it, you know, would take a while because you could only put so much in there at a time. But I can use a wood stove and hang my clothes in front of it, which that I've been doing because we've had a wood stove since in various degrees since we first got married and bought this place. And since my kids were just babies, I've been hanging clothes to dry. And so that's probably been, it's been at least, I would say about 28 years that I've been hanging the clothes to dry in the living room in front of the wood stove. So we've got two clotheslines in there. I've got an off-grid laundry set up for when the power goes out or like in 2020, our old washing machine just up and died and though Patrick had fixed it a few times, got it back 
back to normal this time it was just it was just gone <laughs> and so we had to get a new washing machine but because it was 2020 it took six weeks to get the new washing machine in so i fell back to my off-grid laundry setup and was incredibly grateful that i had it and then a few other things i wanted to bring up was one of the other big things that we did in a part of this was getting ourselves completely out of debt by the time we got to that point that's like you know what we really need to do this all we owed money on was the house and what we did was we ended up refinancing the loan to get the lower interest rates and lower our payments but then we doubled up on our payments for a while so we could get a year or so i think we got two years ahead on our payments doubling them up while also putting some extra money on principal and then once we got so far ahead in payments then we started just really throwing as much money as we could onto that principal cutting back on everything we could think of. And it became a game. It was actually quite fun to see how much can we cut so that we could put even more onto the principal so we could meet our goal of having this paid off in a year or whatever it was. And not only did we achieve our goal, which I thought sounded impossible at the time, we surpassed that goal and paid it off even sooner. And because we had made payments ahead, that extra money that had been that was supposed to go towards interest actually got put in equity and we got all of that money back and it was so we got a check back from the bank for over two thousand dollars which was pretty darn cool so that was part of the one of the big steps of being more prepared was making sure we were totally debt free and then once we were completely debt free we were able to really start putting our funds because now we had this excess funds into other things like buying heavy equipment and bigger items that could make us more self-sufficient and you know it's not like we just had all this cash and we make all this money it was that it was a lot of scrimping and saving and getting ourselves to that point and having the heavy equipment that both Patrick and my oldest son know how to run, we can do our own work on our properties, on our two other pieces of properties. We can do our own work with that here, which we have. Um, Patrick has all kinds of videos out on that. We also have a wood miser now, and he can mill up his own lumber, which then he can create his own whatever he needs to make. And uh, be it countertops or cabinets or new fences or chicken coops or whatever and uh, he's got the skills to do all that we also began getting a little more me started getting more serious about bartering he, patrick even made me what i call a barter box that i have just outside our gate so that when somebody wants to come buy eggs or trade they can put their items in the box and they pick up the eggs and go or they leave the cash some people even just pay me through paypal for eggs and then come pick them up it makes it super easy that way and but you know i've bartered with herbs and all kinds of things like that and so we can do some different trading for various other items with people around us so it's been a really good deal in fact that's how we got some of our chickens was i bartered some of our own homemade items like skin cream and more for some chicks that they were raising you know that they were getting from their own chickens and that's how i got some of the chickens i have including my rooster which now because i have a rooster i were able to make our own chicks and so that's been a cool process so always learning something new and that's what people always have to remember that it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter where you start. As long as you start somewhere, even if it's just putting a few herbs in your windowsill, you know, little plants or um, putting a few extra cans of whatever it is you like best to buy or bags or boxes of this, that, and the other thing. You know, if you don't, if you have limited funds, you just buy one or two extra things and put that in your storage. If you need help trying to figure out because you have very small space, I have a video just on that, you know, food storage for small spaces. I have a video on small space homesteading. And then if you have more space and you're, but your limited funds, again, it's just about starting small. You never have, never feel like you got to be where somebody else is because like I said, we really got more serious. Even though we had some of this stuff already in place by 2010, it was 2010 when we got more serious about really 
getting into this, getting out of debt. So we have a good 14 years of serious preparedness here, not counting what we had already done before that point. So you can't compare yourself to someone who's already been doing something like that for a long time. It's just about taking whatever steps you can, no matter how small they are. Something is better than nothing and never let somebody fear monger you or scare you or make you feel like you're less than because you don't have the fancy equipment they have or because you don't have as much food storage as they have. Never, ever do that. We've all had to start somewhere. And everybody who preaches like that, who says those things, they had to start somewhere too. And remember that preparedness was never, used to never be called preparedness or prepping. It was just a way of life. It was what people did. They grew gardens, they canned their own stuff, they put it up to get them through the winter. That was just normal. That was living. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, I'll what I'll do is I'll put... Um, one or two different playlists down below because I know how I have just like a general preparedness playlist and I have a couple others and I'll put those down below if you'd like to learn more and don't forget to throw in some ideas suggestions or just share your thoughts in the comments down below and thanks for watching take care and God bless